Who doesn't want to make an extra two, three, or even $5,000 per month? Now in this video, regardless of where you're at in your coding skill, I'm going to break down five side hustles you can start doing this year. They are low risk to start. And the cool part of this is any one of these can replace your full-time job as a software engineer if you do it well enough. And by the way, the coolest part is none of these require an upfront investment to start. So let's get into the video. Okay, number one is content creation. Having a social media following is sort of like having a store of value that you can use in the future in 10 different ways. Even if you can just gain a following of 1,000, 2,000 people, it's also gonna pretty much help you do everything else on this list. Now, the two I would recommend right now, starting from zero, would be either Twitter or TikTok slash Instagram shorts. Reason is on TikTok, it's very easy to know what to do because everyone's just copying the trends anyway. And also because even as a brand new account, if you make good content, you can get a lot of views. It doesn't matter how many followers you have. Now, like I said, the secret is to just notice what's already working and then make your own version of that video, maybe adding some specific insights that you have or just doing the same thing a little bit better. Now, Twitter or X is really good because there's the most legit people on there. You have everyone from CEOs to agency owners to solo developers. Basically, almost everyone you'd wanna connect with is on Twitter. In fact, I'm interviewing several open source guys right now for a future video, and a lot of them use Twitter to get the initial users for their projects. Now, the problem on Twitter is how do you get started with zero followers and not just tweet into the void? Well, an extremely effective strategy is to comment on people's posts or retweet them and add some value or do an analysis on someone's successful case study. For example, take a big Twitter user like Nathan Berry, the founder of ConvertKit, consume some of his content and then repurpose it into a why Nathan Berry was able to succeed with that content. The longer term strategy to build up your account is to just tweet about what you're doing, whether you're experimenting with a new library, you just found something coding you thought was interesting and wanna share, or tweeting updates about the project that you're building. These can all get your followers invested in your personal story. And I'll say it again, one of these open source guys I talked with, he launched a project with only a thousand followers and it absolutely blew up. Now, side hustle number two is part-time freelancing. And I say part-time because many people are intimidated to get started. If you can ease into it by not initially trying to create a full-time income out of it, it is a lot more digestible. And I'll break down how specifically you get started with that. So the first great way naturally is to join a freelancing platform like Upwork. Just dedicate 30 minutes to one hour per day, sending out some proposals and seeing what comes back. And you might be surprised what you get even as a relatively new developer. Another great strategy is to ask existing agencies. You can find them on Google, LinkedIn, Twitter, direct message their founder, and just ask if they need some extra part-time help. Now, the important thing with both of these strategies is to have a little bit of credibility on your side. I spoke about this in my last video, why your resume will never get you a job, but the TLDR is you need to build production projects, things that are actually legit. And even if you don't finish them, you'll have something strong to lead with and also to talk about. Okay, now side hustle number three is micro SaaS. Micro often refers to the size of the company, but I think about it more in terms of scope, it being something a single person can realistically build and launch. If you get onto certain parts of Twitter, you'll find many solo developers living around the world, earning 10K, 20K, 50K a month with a SaaS as the only employee. And they do this by solo coding, niche apps, basically focusing on problems that are too small for bigger companies. Now this is just as cool as it sounds, but it's probably the hardest one on this list, just being honest. However, the philosophy behind indie hacking is to just ship as much as possible. That is launch a bunch of projects because it's hard to know which one's gonna take off before you actually bring it to the market. The more you ship, the higher chance you have to get a home run app. And even if it takes you years, if that eventual home run is gonna earn you a million or two million by selling it, you can kind of rationalize it being worth it. If you wanna get started, I recommend reading Peter Levels or Pat Wells on Twitter. You can just see who they're following, who they're engaging with, and then find more and more people in this community. Now, side hustle number four is open source. And like I said, I'm making a video on this soon, uh, interviewing some open source creators you probably know. Really quick overview here though. So open source is great because you can get started with it on multiple levels. On the lowest level, you can check the issues tab on a GitHub project and see what people are struggling with. 
And then assuming you also use that project, you might have some good answers for them just to help them out. On the next level, you can try to actually start fixing the issues or even adding features to open source code bases. Now, important caveat here, make sure something is actually needed or going to be accepted before you end up working on it for too long because the maintainer might not want what you wanna create. And a great way to do that is to just reach out to them and ask them before you start coding. And level three, of course, is that you can build your own OS projects. Some creators are even okay with you forking their code kind of a gray area though. And if you have your own project, you can monetize it with sponsors, content, and it really makes you an authority in the coding world. Open source creator is one of the most respected positions in the developer world with YouTube influencer being at the other end at the bottom. Okay, and side hustle number five is being a coach or a mentor. Now, gotta be careful with this one because everyone is a coach or a mentor nowadays, especially if you go to Bali. <laughs> It's like every second person you talk to, even a lot of people who probably shouldn't be coaches. But what I always found was there is a big shortage of coding coaches for whatever reason. Maybe programmers are less oriented towards people. Maybe they're making too much money in other areas. But I honestly think this is a huge opportunity and space to get into because coding is very well suited for one-on-one -on -one help. In fact, maybe even the biggest area where one or two leverage tips can really save you hours of time if you're stuck or put you ahead when it comes to the job hunt. Now, if you are relatively early in your career, naturally you'd have some imposter syndrome here, but in many ways, someone that's too far along probably forgot how it feels in those early stages and even what they actually did. So just to give some examples, even if you've just got your first few freelancing jobs, people would really wanna know from you how you did that. And it's the same with the strategies you used in the current economy. What did you do as well as help implementing that that is something extremely valuable. Now the awkward part here, of course, is charging people. And what you can do is actually have a paid link to book a call in a software like Calendly or similar. If you're tweeting or TikToking about what you've done, your experience, you can include this link anywhere and direct people to it if they direct message you. Because your time is valuable and have no doubt, if you can help someone get a job, you know, that is gonna be good value for the person paying. Okay, those were five coding side hustles for this year. I hope this gave you some ideas for creating new income streams. And I'll say again, if you can build up one or two of these, there's a lot of crossover between them. And I didn't even get into scaling them, going from freelancer to agency, going from micro SaaS to real SaaS, going from coach to bootcamp owner, I guess. But anyway, I think more people in the coding world should be talking about this because coding is uniquely good for side hustles. So with that being said, if I gave you some value, Hope you'll subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.